Ready. Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to Wednesday morning skincare Q&A. And this morning we're going to do our normal skincare questions. I've got Hannah here. In fact, let me put Hannah up next to you guys on a little um, screen here like that. Um, and she has got your questions from Instagram. But what I'm really, let me just say hello as well. Hang on, hello. Hello, because I want to make sure we get the comments today. Hello. Um, what I think is really interesting is how we choose what products we put on our face and what makes us choose those products, okay? And I think there's a lot of different reasons I know that I choose certain products. Like, if I choose a vitamin C, I want to know the level of vitamin C in that product. I want to know what kind of vitamin C is it? Is it L-absorbic acid? If I'm choosing a retinol, I want to have Retistar, strong retinol. I don't want to have kind of retinol palmitate or something weak. So I do look at ingredients. If I'm choosing a hyaluronic, I quite like hyaluronics with different size particles. So there's certain categories that I will choose my skincare really based upon the ingredients. But then those are probably, that's probably it. Because then when I veer out from that and I go into an indulgent moisturizer, for me, personally, I don't want an indulgent moisturiser to smell of nothing. I like something in the background. I don't want to be overpowered, but I'm very driven by smell. Years ago, I used to work for Cajon, which is a fragrance house in Paris, in one of the many jobs I did before I decided what I want to do with my life. And I worked there with a wonderful man called Sandy Bertrand, and he used to run French Vogue, and then he went to run this, uh, this um, perfume house, and... It was a time when Suskin's book called Perfume, The Story of a Murderer, came out. And he said, buy the book. It's really interesting. And it was, it's, it, it was a book, even though it's about a, a mass murderer. Um, what's amazing about this book is the, this man is sort of born in a 16th century fish market in Paris in the most disgusting smells in the world. Grows up in an orphanage, works in a tannery, and then discovers when he's taking some leather into a shop um, that's a perfume shop on one of the bridges, um, shops on the bridge. And he, you know, this kind of ill-educated man is overwhelmed by these smells. It's like, he, it's like he's been hit by a tsunami. And I found that incredibly strong. I loved that book because it just had an amazing way of describing smells. And, um, and then I was working at Caron, then I worked with the perfume man and, and you know, I, I was, you know, just trying to identify what different smells were. And it became a pet um, love of mine. So, um, you know, there will be some stage when, you know, fragrance will be a more important part of Trinity London. But, you know, it's just, I, I'm really interested to see what you love and how you feel about fragrance in things. Because I'm going to show you now some of my favourite things that I love um, that do contain an essential oil or a fragrance. And there's a really big difference in beauty products that contain essential oil-based stuff or contain something called fragrance, which is basically a sort of chemically formulated smell that's been put in a product that generally is less um, bad for sensitive skin, out of interest. So I'm just gonna say good morning, Mary, good morning, Janice, good morning, Guy, good morning, Jackie, good morning, Karen, good morning, Paul, good morning, Keila, good morning, Lisa, good morning, Sheena, good morning, Suzanne, Jane, Linda, Sarah, Lindsay, Suzanne, Tash, Marvin, Suzanne, Rachel, Lola, Christelle, how are you? Christelle Barbie Knitting, good morning, my darling. Um, Sandra, good morning, Sarah, um, Matt, uh, good morning, Uzma, Abby, um, I haven't tried Oveda Skincare, no. Linda, good morning. Amanda, good morning. Justine, good morning. Jane Goodall, good morning. Trinity Tribe Canada, darling, how are you? Um, uh, um, uh, Brick Girl always. Vanessa Watson, I've read the book. Grenu, Grenu, exactly. That's what it is in French. Good morning, Australia. Good morning, Catherine. Good morning, Brittany. Um, thank you. This is an old scarf. I've just shoved it on because otherwise I'll be naked. Um... It is an amazing book, that. Your son was in that film. Lisa, how fantastic. Unfortunately, I didn't. I mean, the film, it was, you know, when you, you love a book so much and then the film was kind of like, it was not what I wanted it to be. And your son was in the film and it was beautifully shot, but I just, it was such, you know, that man in, in the book. Sometimes things would be left in words. Um, Trini, I recently moved to a mineral sunscreen. Think it'd be better for me. I broke out in horrendous rash. This is true. It can happen. 
Um, Carol, good morning, Monica, County Island. Oh, thank you very much, Matt. Anything with lavender or rose? Yes, yeah, Chanel beige. Chanel beige, true. Yes, Medicaid liquid peptides comes in a clear bottle. Medicaid liquid peptides. Now, I've talked a lot about Medicaid clip peptides, and have I got any here, for God's sakes? I better, because otherwise you all go mad. It's what I've been using on my lashes, and you can see that my lashes are quite good at the moment. Let me just give you, I'll just put on, this is a clear gel, but just to give you a sense of them, there. I've been using liquid peptides from Medic 8, which is definitely not for your lashes, all right? I want to make that abundantly clear. It is just for um, your face, but I put it on, I haven't had an irritation in my eyes, and they haven't suddenly gone wonky. I, but I want to state that they would not suggest you sell them for your eyes. I then and I put them on my on my lashes basically, and then I put on cast off and pucker oil, and then I just comb them through with Talika. So I do every night, but they've really really grown. Um, all right, we're going to take three skincare questions, Hannah, and then I've got a lineup here of my favourite things that contain fragrance, and I'm just going to go through them with you because some of them are little treats that you won't have had of, and some of them you might. And some are really new friends, like one I met last week, as it were. Um, and, um, and others are really old friends. Um, so, Hannah, let's start with three skincare questions, darling. So there was a question about pucker castor oil and whether it would improve hair growth and overall scalp health. I mean, I just think it's a very personal thing. And you've got to think, am I going to go for this concept and believe that a nut oil can help stimulate follicle growth? Because in my eyelashes, it's doing that. Now, you know, is the hair on your lashes slightly different from the hair on your head? A different texture, yes. Um, is it going to be different in how it's going to work? I, do, the, I don't know the answer. But what I do know is that in Ayurvedic medicine in India, um, when I was visiting there a bit, they would always do this scalp massage with this oil, but it was an Ayurvedic really smelly oil. But it was that stimulation of the massage of the hair follicle with an oil. So that is a very important thing and and you know I used to brush my hair a lot and I don't hardly brush it anymore because I if I brushed it goes frizzy but as a result I'm not stimulating my scalp so you know I have got here you know this is regressing that hair and so you know this sort of stimulation is good just to kind of really stimulate the hair follicle you know because what's happening is there's no more hair coming out that hair follicle so stimulation, I think, is no good thing. And stimulating with a castor oil, why not try it is what I'd say. You know, you never know really what works until you try it. Um, also, I take superior hair, which I get from Victoria Health, and I take biotin. Um, and I also take, but it's for skin, hair and nails, Ionicel. Um, I get them all from Victoria Health, but you can get them from any, apart from the superior hair, which is a Victoria Health only product, you can get any of them from any um, health food store. So I'd suggest that as a kind of combination that I found helpful. And I think my hair also, you know, it depends a lot on how well are you treating your hair? You know, oh, I forgot one lovely thing I love. I forgot one lovely thing I love in my little thing and it's to do with hair. Um, there it is. Oh, fuck. Okay, I've got it. Okay, next question, uh, Hannah. If vitamin C gives a bad reaction, what can I use instead to boost skin brightening? Um... Well, if you think that you've got uneven skin tone, like pigmentation, niacinamide, a part of the vitamin B family, is also good for breaking down pigmentation. So you could try a little niacinamide journey, and there's lots of companies that do niacinamide-based products. There's a woman in Australia who specialises in niacinamide, a whole niacinamide range called Dr. Natasha Cook. Very good products. Otherwise, the ordinary do a niacinamide, um, you know, I think probably... Um, Neod do an isinamide. Um, lots of people do an isinamide. So that's one route you can go. Another route you can do, if, it's, if, you're getting, if you're wanting the vitamin C to give you that glow on your skin, you can consider a kind of acid. So um, if I look down here, I've got a few. I got a few. I got a few. Let me just go through my little list. Yeah. Oh, um, actually, I've only got, I've only got one here I love. So this is. Um, Biologique Recharge, which I love. January Labs, I just gave that to somebody else who came up here who needed an acid. I got three, actually. But what an acid does, and another product that also will do this, is something that contains apple cider vinegar, which is kind of a, an acid. It's a, it's a vinegar, which is, you know, an acid. So um, that will just 
take off the dead skin cells. So the inky list have an apple cider vinegar, sorry, inky it's called, isn't it? Black with white background. They have an apple cider vinegar um, sort of tonic. That would be good too. Um, and then another one I love, I mean, I love um, the Immune Ecology Exfoliating Lotion. You put it on, you take it off. That's gonna give you a glow too. And as an alternative, if you're having trouble with vitamin C and you're getting a reaction and you have skin that could have a reaction, I love Jane Shrivener because in this, um, it's an AHA, BHA toner, so an alpha hydroxy acid and beta hydroxy acids. It's a combination, but it's a nice balance. Not too many harsh acids in this. There's lots of sort of softer ones. And also, this is the only acid to me that smells nice. It smells gently in the background of lavender. And there's a little bit of, I think there's some apple cider vinegar in there because you smell that vinaigrette. But there's also a gentle lavender. So, yes, that would be that. Next one, darling. What's the best cream or mask to use after a day on the beach? Well, it depends if you've been a day on the beach wearing SPF and being a good girl or if you've been a naughty girl. So if you've been a naughty girl, there's one or two really nice masks for taking the sort of heat out your skin. Um, I don't know here if I have any. I did have one. It's a real, um, two. I'm going to show you two. two very different ones. Just about to have a wardrobe malfunction. So the first one is at the more spenny end, but this is if you've got redness in your face or you've had a laser treatment or you've had some kind of treatment or you've been in the sun and you've slightly hurt your face. But it's called photocorrective mask and it's an intensive calming botanical mask. Whenever I've di like done a laser and my skin has gone really red, I, it's not that I get burnt in the sun, I use that. And it's brilliant. I don't know what's in it, but I know it works well. So you can do that. Um, you can also look at something like the Grown Alchemist. Um, who have a few masks. They're an Australian brand. They're lovely. Uh, calming, other calming. La Roche-Posay do a calming cream, um, which is in their sensitive range. Um, and Aven also do a calming, like it looks like cold cream mask, which you can get at Boots, which is just sort of soothing. So those kind of products, nothing too, you know, invigorating really, I would say because it sounds like you've, you're saying to me you've gone in the sun a bit. Um, third question, and then I'm gonna do some cut, then I'm gonna do some fragrancing. Yes. Jan has asked if hyaluronic acid can cause dryness. You know what's interesting? I love and loathe hyaluronic acid. Um, because hyaluronic acid, the way it works is it's taking from the moisture outside and it's bring it in. And then you, when you use hyaluronic acid, there's two things you need to know. If you put it on, and then you put nothing on top of it, it won't seal in moisture, because the whole point is it's gonna seal in moisture. But also, if you live in a climate which is really dry, like if you lived in Arizona, I would not recommend hyaluronic acid because there's hardly any moisture in the air and it sort of needs that. It's not just getting the moisture in your body, you know, it's taking the moisture from the air and putting it, you know, through into your skin and it's holding on to more moisture and then you kind of need to put something on top of it to prevent that moisture coming out so there are ways to use it so it works well i find some hyaluronics have only one size molecule and if you find them with two or three size mo molecules and the best one i think neod does a very nice hyaluronic at uh, niod neod it's the ordinary's mid sister you know it's a more expensive version of the ordinary and they um have three sizes I think so one is just going to sit right on the surface one's going to go in a bit and one's going to go deeper because the smaller it is the further it can penetrate through in your through your epidermis um okay so now I'm just going to tell you some of my favorite ones because I just love doing favorites so I'm going to talk about an old friend um and this is I put on this is a toning serum it's by and also I just need to say none of hardly any of these brands are really cheap so let me start with cheap fragrances that I love. The first time I was into a fragrance when I was using it slightly for skin care was um, Neutrogena's oil. It used to come in this kind of bottle like this. They still make it, but it's not as nostalgic the smell as I remember. But it, it, it was a kind of nut oil, but it was slightly sweet. And you put it on damp skin um, after your bath. And it was just, I remember the smell being a smell 
And what was so good about it is the smell, it didn't interfere with the fragrance I was wearing and it didn't irritate my skin. It was just perfect and nurturing and lovely, great. So that was like my introduction. Um, I've always liked the smell of baby lotion. Um, and when I was much younger, I used to, you know, that's a smell I remember a lot. And I think I can think of times in my life and smells. Vetiver by Guerlain, I used to wear from when I was, um, you know, in my 20s. And then I would also wear a really incredibly different fragrance called Fracas, which was a French fragrance and, and sort of gardenia. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Very, very, very distinctive. If you ever meet somebody, if you've ever worn Fracas in your life, in a flash, at five meters, you know they're wearing Fracas. And it can be quite overpowering, but it's an amazingly unusual fragrance. Comes in, it's by Roger Piguet, I think, or something like that. But Vetiver, the citrusy smells, I've always been drawn to. Um, and Neroli, I love Neroli. I kind of love Tom Ford's Portofino Neroli, but I find it too expensive. I can't spend too, I, I bought it for my stepson for his birthday at the airport. And I said, I want to buy you, because he said, I want to get an arch shave. And I just couldn't bear, you know, lovely boys smelling bad. So, well, he's not a boy, he was a man then. But, you know, there's times when if you have teenage boys, they suddenly, they reach for a really weird smell. And then you have to live for a couple of years when they're wearing this hideous lynx or something else. And you think, oh my God, poor good woman who's going to get to know that man. Hannah, have you ever been, remember being boy with boys like that? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, absolutely. We've all been there. So, or had sons who have been like that. I haven't had a son, but I've had a stepson. I have a stepson. So I then bought him the Neroli, Portofino Neroli, and it was 210 pounds at the airport. And I was like, oh, Zach. But I, I'd sort of said, I'd been, done this whole build up saying, I'm going to buy you a fragrance or something. And, and, and I, then I said, why don't we get this one? It's gorgeous on you. I had to buy it. So on that Neroli journey, Votary is a really beautiful UK brand and they do um, essential oil based products. They do cleansing oils. I'm not a cleansing oil fan. They do lovely facial oils. But this is my favorite product from them, as well as a lip oil. I have to say that when I'm, um, you know, I have used this lip oil. Um, so it's the Lemon and Neroli. There we go. I'm just going to put it on because I just... I smell it, and I think what's really lovely taking this combination of lemon and neroli is that it just, it first of all, also, it doesn't feel too oily. It's a toning serum, and I always get nervous with a brand that's based in oils. But anything you put on is too oily. So I put this on, and there's a freshness about it, and I smell, I smell a sort of earthy neroli. It's not a top florally neroli, it's more earthy because the lemon is also not too citrusy and there's something a bit woody in there. So it looks just beautiful and you put it on your skin. So if you didn't want to do a sort of acid toner but you want to tone your skin, you could just do this. And sometimes the playtime of products is really important to give you a sense of a routine. So this only has limited playtime, but if you were in a rush and you just wanted to do a little bit of lymphatic you know, get rid of some sort of overnight um, puffiness. This is lovely to do that with, but it's now finished. That's the, the um, playtime is gone. Votary, love that. I just discovered, and I've talked about a bit, Eels Formula. And this is a hair care brand, which I bought in this little pharmacy in Beecham Place. And it was at a time, it was quite fun story. It was a time when I was just dashing around London for supplements. And, um, and so I went in and, and so my bills were big and I didn't want to look at the detail. And I thought, oh, let me throw in a hair care product. And I went to the till and suddenly it was like 150 pounds. I was like, what? Anyway, um, these were the reason why it got a bit expensive. But one of them, I can't remember which one it is, if it's a finishing serum or the other one that has this smell. Oh, it's this one. So the finishing serum has this smell which is just, you know, hair care can go either way. It can be amazing. It can be really like you think, oh, get away from my hair. But this is a product you put on wet hair or dry hair and it just puts a bit of hydration back in and it's weightless. It's just, it's magical. It's so good that I would nearly use it as a hand lotion. I'm literally saying that because I just feel the hydration. I feel this is the first time ever that I have met a hair care brand that puts sort of skincare properties into its hair care. There we go. But the smell is what I'm talking about here. And my hair just smells great. So love Eels Formula. And um, 
and the Curl Revive is a really great product if you want to make slightly curly hair and give it texture, but you don't want that hard crispiness, this is the product to use. So I, I love it, I love it, I love it. Okay, all right, um, hello, good morning, Texas, hello, Carol, hello, good morning, Nirvana, Deborah, good morning, you have a few drops of frankincense or rose essential oil sometimes in a blab, but nice skincare, it does help. I mean, Burrito, I love as well. Hello, Sharon from Ireland. Miriam, is there a sunscreen that isn't sunscreen? Anything with sunscreen clogs my pores right away and makes you break out. Okay, so Miriam, there's a few things that are important to say about sunscreen. There are, in a way, three different types of sunscreen. There's sort of zinc, you know, which is like a mineral sunscreen. It's physical, it's a physical block. And you put it on, it feels white. There's kind of titanium dioxide sort of sunscreens. And there's more... There's these new brands of sunscreens coming out, which are clear and they're chemical, but they're clear. And I will do, I'm doing SPS in a few weeks, so I will show you um, some of them that I'm really loving. But the most important thing with sunscreen, if you feel you break out, is that sunscreen is a product that really, you know, because of the level of protection it's giving your skin, imagine how much it's blocking your pores. So if you wear sunscreen and then you go out and then it's hot and then you sweat and then at night you think, I didn't wear makeup today, so I don't need to wash my face properly. That's where you make a big mistake because if you don't clean out that pore thoroughly, you might get spots because you've had so much in it all day long protecting your skin. So do think about that and ask yourself, are you really cleaning your skin? So are you doing like a little, if you're doing like a, uh, if you're doing a melting balm cleanser, to me, that's not enough in this instance. Whenever I'm wearing sunscreen, um, heavy sunscreen, I always take a gel bronzer, a gel cleanser as well, and a Foreo, and I really, really clean my skin. And then I'm fine and I don't break out. Um, the one I like, which I feel isn't a huge breaker outer as well, is Helio Care SPF 50, which is a chemical sunscreen. Can one use any brand of peptides for the lashes? Linda, I don't know. I've only tried using this one and I do trust Medic 8 liquid peptides. I think they're good ones. Could you advise the order to apply sun care, please? Serum or moisturizer? Think of the weight of products. It's a very easy way to figure out once you get past the cleansing stage because that's a complicated one. So my routine is this. I will cleanse my skin with a balm. So if I'm be feeling really like I want to spend money, I use De Mamiel's lovely melting balm cleanser. Otherwise, I use the organics one from Boots. But that's taking off my makeup and um, taking off just a bit of residue. Then I'll do a gel cleanser. And I'll do this every day because then I want to really clean my skin. And I'll do that with a Foreo. Done. So I've done my cleansing. Now, the next thing I put on will be the lightest in weight. So it could be a little essence. It could be a toner. I could go straight to a vitamin C. Um, but they're light, that's clear. Those formulas, clear and light, see-through. That's what you gotta think about. The next thing you should be putting on, if you're putting on a few different things, and you put on another serum, um, the serum, so vitamin C loves a clean skin. If you're putting on an antioxidant serum, or a lovely, oh, do I have it here? Because this is another one that I want to talk about. I'm gonna put this on now. So I put on my toning serum. That was clear. And now I'm putting on De Mamiel's antioxidant this is one where the smell is why i buy this product i mean i literally buy this product because it smells incredible but also she has great texture that texture is slightly milky serum that will go on top of a clear serum in my mind so if you do a vitamin c and then you do a sort of plumping serum probably the plumping serum is not going to be clear you put that on next and then depending on your kind of routine you could be putting straight to an SPF and that's it and then your foundation or you might do a moisturizer if you've got very dry skin and then an SPF and SPF as you imagine is the heaviest cream oils are heavy and I would put oils on thick heavy oils on if you, you most people moisturize with a with a cream or they might moisturize with oh, I'll put that on afterwards so oh this is so good so good and that way you shouldn't then have the products pilling and pilling is when you put products one on top of the other and you know if you put water on top of oil too much oil you'll get that little like texture and that's called pilling so to stop that make sure you do in weight order oh can i just say i'm going to tell you about this de Mamiel. it's an antioxidant serum and it's got i, I just i can't remember what's in it 
um, intense neutral. But I do feel, what I love about this, and I use this in the summer, is I will go from this to my BFF because it gives me enough moisture. It's a serum that gives me enough moisture. Um, and the smell, I'm just gonna put it on again so I can, <laughs> so I can tell you what the smell is because it's just so good. It's sort of fresh white flowers. Like I'm in a meadow. It's really fresh. I'm not in a rose garden, I'm in a meadow. It's beautiful, so beautiful. Um, okay, how, oh, Limerick, it's raining, I'm sorry. You have faced in pro, and I seem to be only able to feel it when it's on the highest level. I'm in agreement with you, Andrea, but I think what it could be um, also a question of, and I'm just going to help people who might not know what we're talking about, is what you use underneath it. So these kind of tools, Face Gym Pro and the New Face, they generally come with like a collagen kind of cream or, or you know, gel. And I always think those are a huge waste of money because I think they're expensive and I think you're gonna wipe it off anyway and what's the point? So I buy aloe vera from Amazon, it's about eight pounds. But the trick to me of really feeling that it goes as opposed to there's nothing happening is to use a lot of the gel and because it's cheap you can use a lot of the gel because that gel is conducting the current so the more gel you have on the stronger the current will be conducting that's why if you put this on um and you just do that there's nothing but if i put on a little bit of gel there's something if i put on a lot of gel i feel it so check how much gel you're using darling and see if that's enough that uh, that's what i think the problem might be um good morning uh janet uh you're listening to your interesting story until someone Disturb me, will I be able to replay it? Yes, you should be able to, it's on Facebook. Uh, Alana, I have the worst sensitive skin. I'm in desperate need of great skincare. What's the best? Alana, it's so difficult starting from scratch, my darling. And I think um, if you have sensitive skin, you know, I did a talk. Hannah, did my talk with Julia Hunter come out or is it coming out today about sensitive skin? It's coming out soon, yes. Is it, I think it's coming out today. Or tomorrow. I will double check for you. Because get back to um, <laughs> Julia Hunter, who's the woman who says about going down the path of life, not about aging, we did a live and it was all about sensitive skin. And she believes you can cure sensitive skin. So, my darling, all I would suggest is look out for it. It's in the next few days on my Instagram and it will be on Facebook as well. But what she says in a nutshell is that she believes sensitive skin can be cured by what you put inside your body because sensitive skin is a sign of inflammation, body inflammation, and our skin is a big organ, so it's gonna go, hi, I'm feeling inflamed. So some people have a far greater sensitivity to certain foods than others, especially inflammatory causing foods. Um, and I think you should look, watch it first, and then just check in with yourself and think, am I, you know, are my sugar levels high? Am I eating really inflammatory, you know, sort of nightshade kind of foods? Am I eating tomatoes too much? You know, are there things that you love, but that inflammation is making your skin incredibly sensitive? Um, because Julia, as a dermatologist, has dealt with many of her patients um, who she has literally taken away all signs of their sensitivity by suggesting the changes they make to their diet and supplements they can take and, you know, weaning them off sensitive skin. I, I found it a fascinating talk. I mean, really opened up my eyes to so many things. Alice, love natural scents, avocado, etc., but not essential oils on my face. I know some people are quite allergic to them. How many of you are sort of allergic to essential oils on your face? I'm interested to know that. Um, okay, I'm gonna go into a few more of my favorites. So, in terms of mood changes, um, one that, okay, there's a new one here. Uh, Subtle Energies, this is an Australian brand. This is amazing. There's two things I love from Subtle Energies. One of them is this, and it's a uh, really unusual smell. It's an aura protection body mist. Sorry, it's just, ooh, I just um, didn't turn the hood. It's an aura protection body mist. Now, you might not be a woo-woo kind of girl, and I'm not a woo-woo kind of girl either, but I do sort of feel sometimes, you know, am I feeling there's a bit of negativity around me? And am I feeling I'm exuding a bit of negativity? So what this smell is all about, sounds weird. I'll tell you what it says. Ancient actives providing clarity and focus. And it has tulasi, saffron, and rue kus. But when I spray it, I just 
like this. There's something. So I'm smelling a tiny bit of sandalwood, a bit of sort of camphor, those three things that are mentioned in it. But it's incredible how it switches my focus. It really is. And like, I didn't have this by my desk for a few days, but whenever I'm sort of sitting at my desk and I'm thinking, oh, okay, let me get my focus or I've got to do another film or let me get my focus for this. And I just do this. Changes my mood. Gives me clarity. It's just beautiful. That, there. Subtle energies. It's Australian, I think. Any of you Australians, I don't know if you use it. It's not, none of these, by the way, because also, let's really be honest, anyone who's putting these kind of really beautiful ingredients into products, it's very difficult to make the mass market without them not being their natural product. They do a moisturizer. And I wish, I wish this moisturizer was cheaper because I would, I would use it every single day. So it's special occasion moisturizer for me. Um, it's Morang Mogra rejuvenating gold cream. Anything with gold cream, I'm always like, oh, please, what a bloody gimmick, gold cream. Let's just put another $50 on the bill, shall we? But I just love it. And I don't think it's the gold that makes me love it, but what I love is the smell. I love the smell. This is what inspired me to make the film today because I you know, for all my super duper ingredient stuff, I want it to be clean. I don't want my vitamin C to smell nice. My retinol, actually, I've got one that started to smell, that smells nice and I quite like it because I'm used to very unattractive smells from my retinols. Um, my hyaluronic acid, I'd never want to smell. An acid, I'd never really want it to smell other than the sort of things. But when it comes to moisturizers, how many of you want to have something that you put on your face and you feel there's, there's a nurturing going on. You know, it's not just bunging it on. I think what a smell does for me is it makes me linger over taking care of myself. That's what it does. And it gives me, I want to massage my skin a bit because I feel that I want to kind of continue that relationship with the smell. I know this all sounds very weird, but I'd like to know how you feel about it. And by the way, this is such a rich moisturizer. Oh, oh. And then I just do this at the end. I just go. <sighs> now, the only one I can compare to this, which to me is a high street brand. It's the only one. Actually, there's two um, that are high street brands. Um, is, where is it? 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 Come on. No, the peptides, the active moisturizers. I just want the moisturizers and I had them. I had just a moist. Thank you. So. It's these two, which is the um, Dr. Hauschka and Lay Embrilise. So Lay Embrilise you can get in boots and it's, I think, between 12 and 20 pounds, depending on the size. This is a tiny one, by the way. This is one I got, actually in Space NK and it was a mini version, I thought great for traveling. First of all, I love, I love the texture of Leambrise. as a kind of barrier moisturizer. You've got to have been exfoliating your skin before, okay? Because otherwise there's no point using these moisturizers. It's not gonna resurface your skin in any way. But it goes in beautifully. It's really easy. It just goes in. You feel that instant, lovely sense of moisture. And it's got a smell that is, you know, it's a fragrance. It's not, it's a, a, a man-made fragrance that's been put in this, but it's a lovely smell. And when I catch my, you know, I catch it on my hand, let's say I've been doing it on my face, it's sweeter than the subtle energies. And, and you can tell immediately the difference in the quality. But it's still, as a high street brand, I like that smell. Another smell I like, which I use because the smell, is the Cura Aldi Moisturizer. And that has a nice smell, I've run out of it. But those kind of, those are high street ones. And then, and then the Dr. Hauschka, um, this is the revitalizing day cream. And this is more of a plant-based smell. It's more liquidy. So if you want a moisturizer that doesn't feel too thick, you can see how liquidy this is. 
and it's more like a lay. I mean, the lay amber leaves is a lay, but it's thicker. So this goes on, and the smell is Dr. Hauschka. I mean, if you've ever bought Dr. Hauschka products, you know the smell because it pervades through the range. And it's just a smell of herbs and flowers having babies together. And it, I think it's very, very nostalgic for me. I remember the first time I used Le 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 I mean, D um, Dr. Hauschka. I was with my half-sister in the back of a car in Los Angeles, and I was in my 20s. And she took me into what was Whole Foods then. Um, and she said, do you know this range, Dr. Hauschka? And I remember I bought one of each product. There was like a mini starter kit. And I took it back and I very carefully did the regime. It was the first time I'd really, after Clinique, done this amazing regime. And there was this cleansing paste. I had very bad skin at the time. And then there was this kind of toning cream. And I loved it. And that smell has never changed in Dr. Hauschka. So I think I, I'm led through the decades of my life whenever I use that product. And that's what smell does to me. You know, I don't know how much you've got things that, you know, what do you have that you've used forever because of that smell? Um, um, <coughs> what do I think of ASAP? I think you mean Aesop. Aesop I love and they have great smells too. Um, I'm going to go on to a few more very quickly. So Vintner's Daughter is an oil. This has the most amazing smell. Um, and it works. It's the most beautiful, most expensive um, essential oil, facial oil, but I love it. And I, I really use it very, very rarely when I need a nurturing massage. So it lasts me like a year. Il Apocathory is a British brand uh, based out of Oxfordshire. And she does lots of things for other brands, but she also does her own smells. And her smells are very much like the Subtle Energies lady about... Um, changing your mood and this is called beat the blues room spray um it's just she says it helps to clear an atmosphere and create a peaceful and uplifting space i know friends of mine who put this on their clothing because they love it so much when i first smelt this um i was um doing a live with shabir and jill who's shabir's partner came into my um office and she just smelt incredible. And I went, Jill, what is that smell? It's unbelievable. And Jill can't wear essential oil, so she put it on her clothing. Um, but it's, it's very sweet. But after a while, when those top notes go, because there's many really florally top notes, so you just got to go, woo, go away, top notes. You're left with this quite, it, you do feel that sort of jasmine post-monsoon India with some kind of, rose and I mean there's a ton of stuff going on and this is quite complex but it does it's very mood lifting if you like slightly sweet really mood lifting and that's called beat the blues um this is now I want to be able to say who this is because this is a very um small company and I'm going to try and uh, Hannah can we try and remember who this is but basically at Neville's in Pont Street there's a lovely guy who works there who does massage and he did my hair pieces but he also specialized in learning about Reiki and massage and things. And he developed something called Moon. They're, I think they're called Moon Spray or Moon Drops. Hang on. Moon Mist. Yeah, Moon Mist. Now, I don't know, again, what is in Moon Mist. Um, and this is his very first bottle. And it's a really small business. And if you want to know more about it. But it's literally like he does something to do with minerals and crystals around the time of the moon. But it's not sweet. And it's uplifting and it it gives a good energy i don't know where we're going to find it look it up online i think if you look up moon mist you might get it but it's great couldn't recommend it more highly um mm. i could just go okay you rub the remainder of your facial oil after massaging on my face into your hair jane i presume you've got short hair um because if i did that it would be yank but i i get that you want to have that smell around you which is wonderful how do you get rid of deep vertical lines above the upper lip it's a tough one. There's a few things you can do. And funnily enough, I've started to do something. I mean, immediate effect is Miracle Blur from Trinity London because it will, it will fill them in. It's a brilliant product and it just covers um, those lines. Um, you know, it fills them in like um, poly filler. We, we sell one every 30 seconds, fantastic. But um, I'm going to go with Katie Brindle and do the Hey You massage thing with her in the next two weeks. And she has some, some more like this, which have a, they're very small, but she does this whole facial thing where she, you know, stimulates that line. Now, once you've already got them, it will only soften them so much. But 
watch with me next week when I do it with her because it's basically you hold it down and then you're, we're going to do this kind of movement. You can even do this with your nail. It seems so weird. But just by stretching out, so holding here so you don't pull the other way and stretching out. If you were, if it really, if things really annoy you, we spend more time on it. So if you feel your upper lip lines really annoy you, just try that massage, that stimulation. I even do this when I'm just doing a massage on my face, you know, just to not let the skin set in those lines. I know it sounds odd, but you know, if we have days and days where we're talking and tense and ooh, they're gonna get really set in their ways. And we want moments in our day when we can stretch out that tension and just begin to soften that line. Um, so I'd say that's a good thing to do. Otherwise you can, if you want more midterm solution, you can do radio frequency and you, radio frequency um, will sort of, you know, it heats up your skin a bit and that can be helpful to soften. With Teresa Tame, I've done about three radio frequencies over the last year and that has slightly softened if you have also um, pot marks from spots, it can slightly soften. Then very long term would be a CO2 laser and a CO2 laser is an ablative laser and it will go over your lip line and basically it sort of shreds off layers of skin. It sounds very aggressive, but it's in the sort of micro layer and you'll probably have for a week a lip that will look like it's got a little scab on it, but it will soften it. Now, finding somebody who will do a CO2 laser well is important so you need to research anything like that which is a kind of long-term solution you need to research and then always what i would suggest is if you do find um somebody who says they do it you need to ask them if they would um be happy you could talk to on the patients who'd had it done and speak to them and see what they think just so you get a sense because i think anyone who goes down the path of doing more than just a sun cream or a or a laser treatment you need to have a realistic expectation of what that end result will be and also what you'll have to go through to get it and what the downtime will be because lots of people think i want it and i want it today and there's downtime to a lot of things that will really properly change um uh hannah any questions that have just come up now that i've been missing lots of people asking to repeat products but i'll list them all on the youtube video Great. as it goes up tomorrow. yeah so hannah will put this on youtube and she'll list all the products at the end um so that you can just uh, get it um, get it out. Um, about to use my new face, which I'm not using regularly enough. Question, can I use any facial oil as a conductor? No, Caroline, you cannot. With any of these um, radio frequency products, uh, microcurrent products, sorry, you need a water-based gel. You cannot use an oil-based gel, it doesn't work. Um, Sharon, I work as a nurse in ED. I wear PPE, which makes me sweat and also causes pressure marks that last for a few hours after I have removed the said masks. Um, Sharon, that's so tough. And there are some people who have um, a more photo, it's, I think it's called a photosensitive skin, but you, um, like, if I wear a sleep mask, which is my only comparison to you for doing that, or I'm on a plane and I wear a mask, that, or I'm scuba diving, that stays on for me for 20 hours because my skin doesn't bounce back out and get rid of it. So the only thing I can suggest is you look at different masks, but you wear the emergency masks and they do have a set you know, type of mask. So it'd be difficult for you to kind of make your own mask because it wouldn't be hygienic in the circumstances which you work. So you can either do something which seems a bit mad, but you could do it, which is just to kind of put a little bit of silk here, you know, and have it that you just, it just sort of, you, you have it in the mask and it comes here. So instead of having the lines there, you might just have a bit of fabric of your own that you put there, if that's allowed. Otherwise, it's just about massage. I mean, you know, whenever I get, do a, a sleep mask and I have to then, you know, I do this and just sort of ease it out. Um, or buy, these are really brilliant products. And if you're a nurse and you need to really unstress at the end of the day, Hayu, um, which you can find online, um, H-A-I-O-U or H-A-Y-O-U. And they are, lots of people do these, but I like the Hayu because I think they're very good jade and rose quartz and they're heavy and they work really well. But you can just then do, you know, I do this little massage at the end of the day, but if you want to get rid of things, you can just do this, let's say on the side of your face and just, 
use these to kind of soften the line a bit and it will actually help you de-stress from your day, you know. She's got lots of techniques on her Instagram so you could look at her different techniques um, and there's lovely ones just to ease the jaw, you know, and just kind of ease up the lymph nodes um, which are all get, get blocked here. Um, so yeah, they come in, they come in that too as well in shape got them everywhere i love them so i really love them okay i'm going to give you three of my favorite um fragrance things as well going on so santa maria novella i talk about a lot and they do the crema f which is this moisturizer it's very um heavy moisturizer but i adore it um and it's made of avocado oil and it smells of like gardenia but this is really there's two things they're known for that i have bought for 30 years one of them is the Melograno. A Melograno is um, pomegranate, but it's not pomegranate in a Jo Malone way of pomegranate. Um, this is their bubble bath in Melograno, which is one of their signature scents, but it's just, you've got to smell it to love it. I, it's not too sweet and it's not too citrusy. Um, sorry, you ha fell, Hannah. Um, it's not too sweet, it's not too citrusy, and this is um, a bubble bath, and I use it sh as a shower gel. So I love that from them. And then I love their um, potpourri, which I put into little containers. It comes in a bag, and you buy it. And this is a potpourri um, that's not like your granny's potpourri. It smells, when you smell it, it smells like you've gone into a herb garden and you're inhaling the rosemary and the thyme and a bit of camphor and there's some wood bark and moss nearby and then there's a little lingering blossom in the air and that's what this smell is and it's just the cleanest smell it's fantastic and it's the potpourri from santa maria novella um and that's how it's done and santa maria novella is in florence it's like a cathedral of a pharmacy. It looks like a cathedral. It's next to Santa Maria Novella, the cathedral. You go inside. If you remember um, The Silence of the Lambs, second movie, it took place in Florence. And when he's in that pharmacy, that's Santa Maria Novella. All right, two of my favorite newest ones. Suzanne Kaufman does a range. And I've always liked looked at the range in Liberties for ages. And, um, and I thought, wanted to buy it, and then um, I just thought, no, I won't. And then she sent me, or somebody sent me, it appeared um, at my home, this. Because then I went to buy a second one at Liberty, and it's not out yet. So that's why I'm just going to say, I was sent this, um, and it's called Essence Mineral Body Lotion. All right, just like that. I mean, I want to use the whole thing. I know how quickly I'm going to go through it. That's why I went to buy more. The smell... Oh, it's like enlivening. It wakes me up and I do this in the morning and I'm like, and I'm smelling it and I'm putting it on and I'm feeling how awake it's making me. And it's like, I don't know what it is. It's sort of vetiver with lemon, lemon. That's what I'm smelling, lemon. Vetiver, lemon, um, just, just brilliant. I love it. I love it. It goes in well. Um, the smell is delicious. I have no idea how much it is because I don't even know if it's out yet. But I'm just going to tell you when it's out, you will find it, I think, at Liberty's. That's where she sells her range. And it's divine. I'm not going to imagine that it's cheap, unfortunately. It's a mineral body lotion. There's tons of stuff here about how amazing it is. It stimulates your own synthesis. It's seven minerals. It's a lot of stuff, okay? But just, I just have to tell you, that's my true joy. Okay, candle ranges. How many of you have candle ranges? There's a candle range. I used to love Diptyque. And then Diptyque, I felt, changed a bit. I felt the fragrances weren't there anymore. You know, I still quite like it, but the fragrances weren't there anymore. And um, a very old friend of mine um, called Victoria, who I've known since I was 20, started a candle range. And she started it really quietly. Um, and, you know, she's just built it up. And now, I mean, I think what's magnificent, she was an interior designer. And what's amazing, and this is not just because she's my friend, I just think the branding, the presentation, I just think the whole thing is so beautiful. Um, but this is how her candles come. They're really, really big. Really big in terms compared to, you know, a normal person's candle like maybe that. Um, and 
they have two wicks and there's some phenomenal, phenomenal smells. And the way she describes smell, it's like she's a perfumier because um, she evokes to you um, situations. And you kind of go on the site, Victoria Cater Design or victoriacater.com, you go on the site and you basically read the mood and you say, I'm gonna buy that candle. So I'm now, I'm going to read to you. Oh, I hope I've got it here because it was so lovely how she described something and I want to light it with you for the first time. So let me just see if I can find that. So just, just this is pretty. So she has a rum spray here and her mother died. Um, she was very close to her mother. Madame Julia rum spray, named after my mother and a take on chamade that my mother used to wear in the 1970s. The first fragrance to use black currant leaves, Bulgarian rose and amber gis, okay? Just a beautiful um, fragrance. It's a room spray, really heavy bottle, lovely. Just kind of sort of that sweet. You smell a little bit of the black currant. It's very, it's beautiful. But Ren de la Nuit, it's got star jazz and whatever. But then there was something here. Yes, this is what I want to do. Cala Grande. Cala Grande. And the reason I love, and I'm just, I'm starting this for the first. I'm over, um, I, the smell is delicious. But... For those of you who can't go on holiday, this is what it's about. I want to end on this, actually. Um, because I really, I went away for a few days with my sister, but I really miss, in the summer, I miss the Mediterranean so much. I miss the cypress trees. I miss the flowers. I miss everything about the smells that you get in the south of France or in Italy or in, you know, those countries. That, those amazing smells of those beautiful flowers at night and, and early in the morning. So um, anyway, she's done a fragrance and it's called Cala Grande and it's reminiscent of Mediterranean holidays. So I thought if you can't go on holiday, then you can consider having the smell with you all the time. So just, it's got mint, it's got grapefruit, tomato, clover leaf, just beautiful. I'm going to have it on my desk all day and I'm going to feel I could be on holiday and I think that's brilliant but everything is it's just look at that Madame Julia it's so beautiful design and as gifting it's lovely and I think the price point is pretty good for what it is and how big they are um so that is I think it I mean I've got I'm going to just do a few runners up because these are things I love the fragrance I wear every day at the moment is Samuel Gravin woody fig it's from Australia and it's a lovely man, and he did this for Bondi, Bondi Wash. I found it in Bondi Wash when I went with Lila, but it, it basically is a take on fig, and it's a beautiful take on fig, and it's not too sweet. Love that. An all-time favorite for me is Roger Gallet, Imperial, and this is like a 4711. It's a man's cologne, but it's fresh, and it's citrusy, and it just, I love that kind of smell. That's, that's it. I think I'm done, Hannah. I think I'm done, darling. So I hope you enjoyed it. I just felt I wanted to do fragrance day. I felt inspired by fragrance, but I'd love to know from you guys how you feel about fragrance in products, you know, because I think that fragrance for some people can be aggravating, but maybe what's aggravating are essential oils more. And fragrance, if it's in a very small amount, I find I'm fine with it. And I kind of, there are instances like, do you like fragrance in a cleansing balm? You know, do you feel you want, because I have my, organics cleansing balm from Boots, which has no fragrance in it. And when I'm doing that process, I miss it. I miss that nurturing unctuousness. Um, and when I do my De Mamiel cleansing balm, or I do, Yves Lom had a distinctive smell, but unfortunately Space NK who bought Yves Lom, um, they ruined the smell, I'm sorry, I just have to say that. Um, but there's a few like that in a gel cleanser. I don't like a smell, but I want to know your feelings on it and what you think about smell and what you love. And if you have any you want to share with people, um, that would be great too. There's so many comments up here, Hannah. I know that I've just, I mean, I hope that, um, uh, links Africa, all the boys at school. That's so true. Hannah. Yes. Is there anything I've really missed that we should, um, that we should grapple on? No, you've pretty much covered everything, actually. And I just have. to let you know, it's 10 a.m. I think you have a meeting. Oh, my God, it's 10 a.m. I have a meeting. Thank you, everybody, very much for watching. And um, it's it's been a joy for me to do this because it's just sharing my my love of 
smells, and I do have a strong love of smells. <laughs> uh, have a wonderful day.